So, you've thought of an innovative idea that'll set the gaming world alight, drafted a storyboard, developed some characters, and fleshed out the plot. You've spent months, maybe years, with a crew of creative, intelligent people building a fun, challenging, even beautiful game, and after all that, it never sees the light of day. Boo. Unfortunately, exciting projects meet this grim end more often than you may think. It turns out that it's hard, time-consuming, and expensive to make video games. Who knew? And sometimes it all just gets a bit too much. Fortunately, though, we here at Triple Jump are proud preservationists, and so you can rely on us to immortalize these otherwise forgotten projects in list video format. Oh, we're doing the Lord's work. From sequels of much-loved titles to interesting concepts that didn't get the chance they deserved, I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and these are 10 cancelled video games that never saw release. Number 10. Socks the Cat, Rocks the Hill Frankly, this game could not be more 90s if it tried. Oh, what a decade. Back then, the world was fun, freewheeling, and easygoing. The best-selling artist was Celine Dion, James Bond was played by Pierce Brosnan, and the President of the United States did not have sexual relations with that woman. And you know what? We weren't the least bit interested, quite frankly, in whether Clinton had had a little bit of Monica. What we really cared about was his pet cat, Socks. In fact, video game developers really Real-time associates, terrible name, were so interested in this little feline that they decided to make a game about him for the SNES. I know, different times, right? Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill follows the titular hero as he makes his way past spies, politicians, and the dastardly media to warn the Clinton family of a stolen nuclear missile launch device. On one occasion, according to Wikipedia, Socks must push Millie the dog, pet of former President George H.W. Bush, out the front door to, quote, avoid Arab terrorist felines. The game also depicts Ted Kennedy driving on a bridge, a reference to the Kappa Quiddick car accident, in which the senator's negligence resulted in the death of his 28-year-old passenger. Not quite what I expected from this game, I must say. Originally set for release in the autumn of 1993, the game was cancelled in summer of 94 after experiencing delays. The game was actually finished, however, and a prototype SNES cartridge did eventually find its way into the hands of collector Tom Curtin, who released the ROM after a successful Kickstarter campaign. I guess with that in mind, Socks the Cat actually barely qualifies for this list, but uh, we'll, we'll chalk it up as a wildcard entry, haha! <laughs> so while this game was indeed cancelled and never got its official release, there is in fact an emulatable version available so that everyone can enjoy the slightly politically incorrect adventures of Socks the Cat. Number 9. The Lord of the Rings – The White Council the White Council was an RPG that started development at the ill-fated EA Redwood Shores studio. Based on J.R.R. Tolkien's world-renowned fantasy series The Lord of the Rings and the oh-so-lengthy film trilogy of the same name, players would have chosen whether to be a man, dwarf, elf, or hobbit – elf every time, right? – with the ultimate goal of becoming a hero allied with the eponymous White Council. Similar in feel to titles such as Skyrim, the game's action was to take place in a massive open world where the player could go anywhere they desired, either by following a specific set of story missions or forging their own adventure entirely. Originally planned for release in late 2007, the game was delayed indefinitely on the 2nd of February, citing management problems, and then ultimately scrapped for good. EA subsequently went on to work in tandem with Pandemic Studios on 2009's The Lord of the Rings Conquest, but that turned out to be one of the most average and unremarkable games of the past 10 years. So, uh, another great decision by Electronic Arts there. Brilliant. Number 8, Fortress. Developed by Grin, Fortress was the codename of a project set to be a spin-off of Final Fantasy XII. Located in the recurring Final Fantasy world of Ivalice, I, 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 I won't pretend I know how to pronounce that, the main aim of the plot was to bring the entire cast of Final Fantasy XII back together for one last fight to save their world. Kind of like the Avengers, but with bigger swords and hair. 
Amazingly though, the real-life struggle behind the scenes during the game's development was even more dramatic than the plot itself. With a fee of $16.5 million being agreed between the publisher Square Enix and developer Grin, production started in the second half of 2008, but problems began pretty much instantly as no payments were made during the first two months of development. That's kind of an issue. In fact, no payments were ever made to Grin, with Square Enix becoming increasingly hard to please, difficult to work with, and apparently clueless at how finances work. Man, this reminds me of an ex-girlfriend, actually. It's reported at one point that Grin sent an image to Square Enix taken directly from Final Fantasy XII, that's Square Enix's own game, only to be told that it did not look like a game in the Final Fantasy style. Oh dear. Grin filed for bankruptcy in August 2009 and described Fortress as, quote, an unreleased masterpiece they weren't allowed to finish, which would make me sad if I cared at all about Final Fantasy. I don't though, so sorry. Number 7, Doom 4. The first signs that a fourth Doom game was on the way were in August 2007, when co-founder and then lead designer of id Software, John Carmack, made indications to that nature at QuakeCon. Then, after a year of uncertainty, the game was officially announced to be in development in May 2008. The new game was said to take place on Earth and feature gameplay more similar to that of the first two games rather than the survival horror style of the most recent Doom 3. By all accounts, development for Doom 4 was going okay, despite the amount of time it was taking. In 2008, Carmack boasted about how pretty it would be, saying they would be able to throw three times as much horsepower at Doom 4 than 2010's Rage, another game that was being made by id at the time. Then in 2011, he mentioned that it would be using a new scripting language called SUPERSCRIPT. It seems this was all a front though, as by the end of 2012, the team decided to make Doom 4 a reboot rather than a sequel. And in November 2013, Carmack left id Software to focus on Oculus VR, leaving a wake of people crying, huh, VR for home users? That'll never catch on. Reports since then seem to show that the development of Doom 4 had been a mess, and that the game had been completely restarted in 2011. The first version had been described as mediocre and too similar to the Call of Duty franchise, and the second offering fared no better, being described as lame and lacking in personality. Alright guys, won't you tell us how you really feel? Eventually, of course, Bethesda did publish a Doom title developed by id Software in 2016, and it was well received, but it was indeed a reboot of the franchise and did not contain any of the elements of Doom 4. I guess Doom 4 4 was just doomed to fail. <laughs> oh, what a joke. Oh yeah, woo! Number six, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Patriots. A case of announced too soon with too little substance and a good dose of bad luck, Rainbow Six Patriots was to be another first person shooter in Ubisoft's successful series of games bearing Tom Clancy's name. Set in New York City, the game saw Team Rainbow being called to the rescue once again, this time against a terrorist group calling itself the True Patriots. But instead of singing anthems or painting flags on their cheeks like good patriots do, this group decided to take the law into their own hands on behalf of the victims of what they called Wall Street Corruption. In 2011, Ubisoft decided to prematurely announce Patriots due to worries of a potential leak, and had to stress that the trailer they showed contained a pre-rendered concept created in 2010 rather than footage of any current game build. After this, news was relatively slow and ultimately negative. In March 2012, it was announced that the game had lost a score of its development team, with the creative director and lead designer amongst those to part ways from the product, and due to the death of Tom Clancy himself in October 2013, concern was raised that there may be no more releases bearing his name. Ubisoft have since put this to bed though, stating that they will continue to use the name of the late author out of, quote, respect. Finally, after years of generally bad news, it was announced in June 2014 that Patriots would be sadly scrapped. But Team Rainbow did ride again in 2015's title Rainbow Six Siege, so at least there's a happy ending there. Number 5, Insane. 
Hey, look, that's cool, different and quirky. They've capitalized the sane bit. I wonder what that could mean. Well, wonder on, I'm afraid, because we'll never find out. Announced at the 2010 Spike Video Game Awards via a 30 second trailer, Insane, or rather Insane, was a survival horror game developed by Volition intended for release on the PS3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows. Interestingly, the game was supposed to be the first of a trilogy published by THQ in collaboration with that their film director, Guillermo del Toro. You know, the guy who directed Oscar winning The Shape of Water? No? P Pan's Labyrinth? Anyone? He, he voiced Mustache Man in Puss in Boots 3D? Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, you know who he is. Yeah, him. In fact, perhaps it was his performance in 2011's Puss in Boots that caused THQ to rather unceremoniously announce the cancellation of Insane in August 2012, claiming it was only in the very early stages of development and all rights would go back to Del Toro. Since then, there have been some reports of Guillermo finding a publisher for the unfinished game, but at the time of writing, there are no confirmed plans to bring it into fruition. Number four, Brothers in Arms, Furious 4. It's a tale as old as time. You wait forever to hear about a cancelled Ubisoft FPS in a triple jump list, and then two come along at once. Developed by Gearbox Studios, Furious 4 was intended to be a more casual sequel to the Brothers in Arms franchise. So instead of the usual gritty realistic approach, the plot followed a fictional unit traveling through Germany on a mission to find Hitler himself. And and hopefully kick him. I, I like kicking Hitler. Announced at E3 2011 during the Ubisoft press conference, the game was scheduled for release in early 2012, but yeah, you guessed it, a release never came, with Ubisoft abandoning the trademarks for Furious 4 to Gearbox in May 2012. At that point, it looked like the game would go through some rather drastic changes, i.e. dropping the Brothers in Arms name for one, but would still eventually find its way onto the shelves someday. But again, uh, Nope. In July 2015, Gearbox head honcho and resident magician Randy Pitchford stated that Furious 4 was not a thing anymore, though it's said that elements of the game were utilized by the 2016 title Battleborn. So it was only a slight waste of four years work. Number three, Silent Hills. It's a tale as old as time. You wait forever to hear about a cancelled Guillermo del Toro survival horror title in a triple jump list, and then two come along at once. What is, is there an echo in here? Yes, it's true. The famed Puss in Boots 3D mustache man, Mr. Del Toro, has had little luck in the video game business as a whole. That's not to say that Silent Hills warranted cancellation, though. It looked pretty great. The game was announced through free-to-download PT, or Playable Teaser, on the PlayStation Store in August 2014, and it was well-received both publicly and critically, notching up over a million downloads in the first month, and even winning an award for Best Horror Game from Giant Bomb. It, it was only a teaser and it won Best Horror Game. PT also revealed the involvement of Del Toro as an assistant director and The Walking Dead's Norman Reedus in the role of the game's protagonist. Using a first-person perspective rather than the third person more commonly found in the Silent Hill series, the demo follows an unidentified man who finds himself in a haunted, seemingly unending corridor. Pretty much all the player could do was walk and zoom in, but they had to solve a number of challenges before a trailer revealed the juicy details of the fourth game. Problems arose in March 2015, though, when it was reported that the director of the game, Hideo Kojima, would be leaving Konami after the completion of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. And a month later, Del Toro reportedly told attendees of a San Francisco Film Society event that the game had been cancelled. So is that it? I hear you ask. Will poor old Guillermo ever be involved in a successful video game release? That's my impression of you guys. Well, yeah, he might be. Despite having vowed in a 2015 interview to never get involved in the industry again, it seems that in reality he couldn't stay away, and he's currently working on Death Stranding with the former director of Silent Hills, Hideo Kojima. Fingers crossed, Guillermo. Third time lucky, I suppose. I'm sure the weird-ass game with the pissing mechanic is gonna take the world by storm. You do it, Del Toro! I believe in you! Number 2, Grand Theft Auto Online Crime World. 
Multiplayer GTA over the internet? Surely not, scoffed everyone who heard about this harebrained concept at the end of the last millennium. In late September 1999, DMA Design, now known as Rockstar North, announced two new games in the Grand Theft Auto series. These would be Grand Theft Auto 3D, which later became GTA 3, and Grand Theft Auto Online Crime World, which did not later become GTA OCW, because that would be a terrible name. The latter was intended to be a game focused on multiplayer online gameplay, stylistically similar to GTA 2, with a top-down view. Intriguing. However, while Online Crime World received one more mention in the February 2000 edition of British magazine PC Zone, that was the last time the developers published any information about it at all. It appears that Rockstar just had too much difficulty trying to make the game and weren't able to devote enough time to it when there was so much to do with GTA 3 and the subsequent Vice City. Of course, the concept was realised much later on in the online shenanigans of GTA 4 and 5. It took them almost 10 years, but I think we can all agree they did a bloody good job in the end. And number one, Prey 2. Prey 2, or Prey... 2, if you want to get serious about this, was to be published by Bethesda and developed by Human Head Studios. Initially announced by 3D Realms, development on the sequel to the wonderful Prey 1 of 2006 didn't really begin until three years later under Human Head, as the rights are transferred to Zenimax Media, Bethesda's parent company. This is all quite complicated, but I can draw a flowchart if you need one. In early 2011, the game was re-announced by Bethesda with a few changes to the original concept shown off in a very intriguing trailer. The main player character was different from the original, and the game had transitioned to more of an open world experience. The protagonist would now be US Marshal Killian Samuels, surely the most fake sounding yet somewhat plausible name in all of fiction, a bounty hunter trying to make a living on the alien planet Exodus after his abduction from Earth. Bizarrely, despite having reached near alpha release state, Human Head quietly stopped working on this game in late 2011, and everything went quiet, with many speculating the game had gone into development hell. Finally, in October 2014, Bethesda officially cancelled Prey 2, stating that although they still believed in the franchise, they were never fully satisfied with the game. Oh, oh well, only five years of development and a great trailer up the swanee. Bethesda, of course, went on to reboot the franchise in 2017, with Dishonored's Arcane Studios at the helm, and the old Prey 2 fell into the sad pile of promising games never to be released, but to be forever referenced in occasional Simon Miller impressions if you want to get serious about this. And that is all this. But what do you miss out? Let us know in the comments below and be positive about it. We'll all grow as a person. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here. And if you want to support the things you enjoy, then check out the rewards on our Patreon. They're lovely. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I've been Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.